Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Friday, December 8th, 1044 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. As usual, we're looking at the albedo map. It's showing snow covering the ground north of 30 degrees, two weeks out from winter, with snow penetrating as far south as 20 degrees north. There is even snow here in Africa. And as, I mean, this is unprecedented. We're going to be covering it. The latest, more than 250,000 without power across the South. This is unprecedented. More than a quarter million electrical customers across the South lack power after a snowstorm and could face a cold night tonight. I'm getting emails from everywhere. Jackson sees its highest snowfall since 1982. This is Jackson, Mississippi, not Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Which, by the way, has the record snowpack this year, currently. But Jackson sees its highest snowfall since 1982, and that was in the winter. They're not giving you the whole truth here, guys, except the power's out and people are cold. Record snow blankets, Houston and Texas. Houston, say it ain't snow. It's not a dream or nightmare, but reality, called the Grand Solar Minimum. One of the biggest snowfalls in history just while up the Texas, Texas Gulf Coast and it's fall. And it has brought Houston to a crawl in fall. <laughs> I made a punny. It ain't that funny. Now guys, the pictures are crazy. That's downtown Houston. Houston also had the fifth snowiest December day on record when 0.7 inches fell in the international airport. The, here are the numbers. I want you to notice something. There's a lull from 1929 to recently. And then a bump up in 89. And then in the last few decade, look at that. Hmm. Do you see a pattern there, Houston? Houston, the eagle has landed and it is made of snow. Snow is falling in Houston. The last measurable snow there was eight years ago, but it happened in the winter. <laughs> Snowstorm, cold rain, severe weather threatened the southeast tonight. A rare cold early December. See, they should really say a rare cold fall storm will bring everything from snow, sleet, and rain and th severe thunderstorms. Look at these numbers. I used to live in Asheville. Awesome place. All you people out there, you're going to love it. Cold Mountain. Gosh, I love that place. Right here, Deliverance. Ding -ding 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 -ding. Brevard County. As the snow moves along, some colder air will evade. This is going up to the northeast, guys. That's the way the nor'easter works. Let's talk about the Alaska record snowfall event that happened in Valdez, the snowiest part in North America. This is the snowiest area in North America. Just reported a record during global warming, <laughs> the most snow ever recorded in an hour during global warming. And if we just come over and check the K7RA solar update, check this out, guys. There was a geomagnetic storm peaking on December 5th in Alaska. The College A index reached 55. Boom! That was the night of this storm. So this is the energy which I've tracked down to figure out what happened there in Alaska that made that compression event happen. And this is only the beginning of these types of events. It's going to continue to get worse solar cycle after solar cycle after solar cycle. So you think 10 inches an hour is big for Valdez. How about 10 feet? You can come do the math yourself. Double check. Because the College A index reaching 55 peaked around the middle of UTC with a K index of reaching over 7 in Alaska over two three-hour readings, followed by the most extreme snowfall rates ever recorded. Huh. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say correlation is not causation. 
but the facts are in. First fatality confirmed from Southern California wildfires. The Santa Ana winds are being driven by the grand solar minimum pattern. We're going to have higher winds, larger hail, more extreme events as the decades progress. I'll leave you links. Let's talk about the downgrading of earthquakes. Earthquake 4.1 strikes near South Landing, California. This is in the Mammoth Mountain Mono Crater in your lakes. Mono Lakes in your crater area. Excuse me. Here's the Mono in your craters. The earthquake happened down here near Mammoth Mountain in Long Valley Caldera. We're going to look at it. This is related to increased seismicity and volcanic activity during grand solar minimums accentuated by cosmic ray flux. And I'm going to be putting out the second part of the John Casey book uh, in the morning. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. Additionally, we have a really big announcement coming at the end of the video that you'll all be really interested in hearing. It's about uh, preparation for the coming events <clears throat> and ways that you guys can survive and thrive and really prosper. Here's the earthquake that was downgraded now to 3.8 and it's a stack of quakes at the here is a uh, gosh what is the name of this lake mono lake i'm not from cali but this is a huge caldera this area that erupted uh, erupted here's the long valley caldera down here you can see it there's the edge of it so this was once a volcanic eruption around 700,000 years ago the scale of Yellowstone and this was involved as well these are giant flat openings on the earth that blew up into space guys this is like a thousand Mount St. Helens blowing up here and I think that the Mono Inyo craters as far as my geologic standpoint, this is the, the biggest worry, not Yellowstone, because this baby erupts during grand solar minimums. <laughs> and if you just come look at the data here, I'm going to leave you that. It says an ex explosion pits on Mammoth Mountain were excavated in the last hundred thousand years or the last thousand years, while the uplift of Pahoha Island on Mono Lake about 250 years ago. So these volcanoes here, Black Point and Pahoha Island, happened during the Dalton Minimum. And which means that this area is probably going to erupt during the next solar minimum. Now guys, that happens in about 2032 to 2035 but it could also erupt in the next three years during cycle 24, 25 transition. This is based on the data and we'll be covering it in the uh, upheaval series tomorrow morning. So that's a heads up for Mono Inyo. Usually, uh, we, about six months ago, there were, was a swarm here where there were a thousand earthquakes in eight days below 2.5. And now we have more major seismic activity in a cluster here now look at the 3.8 if this was above 4.0 this would be an eruption about to happen potentially and we're going to get to more eruptive activity happening globally so this is a heads up for the people in this area that this area is going to become volcanically active in the near future if not in the next three years it will calm down and will become more active in the 2030 time period but this could blow in the next few years, and we're going to be watching it. It's very important. That's a major area. Here we are in Grand Solar Minimum Sun in the A range. We're about to drop into low KP, like I told you in last night's update. So look out tomorrow for psychic abilities, uh, clairvoyance, and people that are at risk for medical issues. Prepare yourself. Put yourself out of harm's way. Stay calm. Um, and we'll be watching that. Guys, I also have an announcement. I'm going to be going to the uh, conference in Phoenix. 
in February where they're going to be covering the health effects on geomagnetic activity. So we'll have extensive coverage of that coming up this spring for you guys because we're going to be uh, getting the cutting edge information from top, top doctors on the subject. So look out for that in the future. Let's move on with the update. Now all this volcanic activity and earthquakes as predicted by the bubble muon hypothesis and as we cover the John Casey upheaval book, the International Earthquake and Volcano Prediction Center uh, uses this cosmic ray flux data. So the watchers, this is catching on in the public blogosphere. The watchers are picking up on this in an article. <coughs> now, unfortunately, they talk about atmospheric cosmic rays increasing as we go into this solar minimum, but they don't really tell you the truth. It's going to be increasing above levels unseen in human history as cycle after cycle. Let's get to the effect of cosmic rays, increased volcanism worldwide, which drops the temperature even faster. Here we have Orofiocal Caldera, which we predicted two months ago to be the danger as the volcano erupting. Now, of course, mainstream is following suit two months later. They actually have the data, 65 feet geothermal heat in the area. The caldera has dropped. This is bad news for Iceland, air travel, and global temperature. Which means in the, in the coming weeks and months, we will be able to determine if this may explode. And it might be Arya Fayoko that begins the rapid descent of temperature. We're going to be watching it. There's also increased activity at Villa Rica in Chile. Look at the glow in there. And these are going to be lighting up around the planet. Now, these are the sheeple. Look at these idiots. This is sulfur dioxide, poison gas. Uh, this is erupting about three miles up, cooling the planet slightly. And look at these idiots. My goodness, I can't wait until this event finally takes place and people like this no longer populate the earth. And unfortunately, that's really the, my, my feeling. That's crazy. Good news, mapping area risks for liquefaction. Guys, I've been talking about this word liquefaction for, for months. And those that you don't understand it, you should just Google it. I have several videos from months ago where I leave you links to this. Now, it's amazing that uh, the mainstream and geologic surveys across the globe are now really into seismic monitoring. And I think it has a lot to do with uh, the International Earthquake and Volcano Prediction Center, John Casey's uh, company that he started. <clears throat> and the work they did warning the public, which we're going to go over in the morning if you watch the video. And they've, been, they've warned all governments worldwide since 2011 of the coming catastrophes. And I think people are picking up on it. Now, here's good news, guys. Today, I was contacted by Dr. Anita Bailey, who has a book that just came out in November 12th of this year. She's awesome. The book is called Cold Times, Preparing for the Mini Ice Age. This book is hundreds of pages. It contains everything you need to know. No holds barred guidebook to surviving the coming mini ice age. It covers choosing a location, heating, storing and growing cold resilient food and medicinal herbs, water collection and filtering, health preservation, retrofitting, severe cold and heavy snow, storm sheltering, raising chickens, rabbits, goats and other hardy livestock, home defense. <clears throat> firearms, solar and alternate energy, psychology of survival, and much, much more. This thing is packed with recipes, wild edibles, homesteading facts. Boom! We're about to get a discount on this. She's contacting the publisher, and I'm going to get the details for you guys in the coming days. We're going to get a great deal on this book. Do not buy it yet. Tell people about it, and anyone that watches the channel can get this discount. We all need to have this book on our shelves because when the cloud fails, we will have all the information we need to save the people we love around us. And that's an amen. Thank you, Dr. Anita Bailey, PhD, for getting in touch with me. We love you. We're going to support your book. Uh, we love it.
So stay tuned for more details on getting a discount on this book and getting it into your hands. This is the most important document you can own. Boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. We're going to be making an announcement about the uh, discount on her book. Uh, times are changing. There's snow in Mexico. And we're two weeks out from winter. So how to prepare for the mini ice age uh, by Anita Bailey is really going to be the main book that we all need to get. Okay? That's a heads up. I hope you got something out of the video. You have any questions, leave it in the comments. And look for the uh, part two of the upheaval series tomorrow where we're going to discuss the actual warnings that the International uh, Earthquake and Volcano Prediction Center has actually sent out globally warning governments who are now reacting to the warnings and actually doing something about it. Be safe, everybody.